Hello everyone, I'm John Van Auken, the director of the Edgar Casey Foundation, and I'm the guest host of this Reflections uh, series that we've been doing. And today, I'm going to chat with a major spiritual leader that has been working on the path since 1985. John Davis is the director of Coptic Fellowship International, an action-oriented modern philosophy based on the laws of balanced living, introduced originally by the Egyptian mystery schools. He is also the director of the Spiritual Unity of Nations, dedicated to the world as one family. John is the author of three books, Be the Light of the World, Messiah and the Second Coming, and Revelation for Our Time, which is a positive universal prophecy for the coming times. John, it is so good to see you again. I enjoyed listening to your talks about spirituality and the Edgar Casey Center here and all of our members and friends are very much interested in spirituality. And we often think that many of us are uh, reincarnated ancient Egyptians. <laughs> and you've been to Egypt over 30 times and I have too, so uh, I think your soul and our soul group have a connection. I agree. Yeah, I agree too. Uh, it was wonderful hearing you speak and teach uh, others on spirituality. And uh, I noticed that you've written uh, three books um, about spirituality, the revelation, the Messiah, um, it's very interesting to our people, these topics. Uh, where, what do you feel is the present future, the near future related to the prophecies? Well, people like us are here to create a positive future. That's, way, that's why we are here. And uh, this is why Egypt was the beginning of something on a very, very high spiritual level. And the chakra system in Egypt is what is in the back of our, our back, so to speak. Yes. And we go, through, we go through these initiations to uh, attain Christ consciousness. That's what we're here to do. And then, and then help other people. So at the same time, we're dealing with creation of the future. Yes. Like seeds. Yes because that's, that's, what's, that's what's happening here. Yes, I agree. So many souls have come in bringing a new light, a new love, a new appreciation of humanity as being one family. Uh, this is very important to help bring the new age about. Absolutely. Yep. And, 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 and this is why we we represent kind of the forerunners. The uh, forerunners, yeah. Yeah. But uh, really, basically, I am a, I'm a universalist. A universalist, yes. I'm a universalist, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a Coptic, of course, which is Egyptian, but I've traveled, I've been in the travel business a long time. And when I went to these different countries, I evaluated their religions, and guess what? I liked them all. Yes. <laughs> you know, Edgar Casey was quite a universalist. And uh, when I was in Egypt, I learned a lot about Coptic Christianity and that uh, the disciple Mark uh, actually uh, went into Egypt and established the Coptic faith. That's, that's what I understand, too. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Uh, it's a little closer to Eastern Orthodox uh, ceremonies and practices uh, versus uh, Roman uh, Catholicism uh, of the West. It's a little closer to the Eastern uh, style and ceremony. And I noticed their churches have three altars, which is very interesting and symbolic, of course. You being a numerologist, <laughs> three is a, a great symbol there. It's a, it's, it's a symbol of communication on yes. multi-levels. 
Yes. That's the three years. And I, when I find them in my readings, they have a wonderful personality and delve into the higher facets of communication. And of course, this is what, you know, both of our organizations are into. We, we, we are futurists, yes. positive futurists, of, of, and, and to create a better world. Absolutely. Uh, our community and, of course, Edgar Casey's files are full of a enlightened future, a, an age in which all evil uh, will be bound from the earth for a period of time, like right out of the Revelation, which you wrote about, uh, Satan bound for a thousand years in a golden age. Yeah, I use numerology to decode the book of Revelation. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what my book's about. Uh -oh. And to try and because being a numerologist, you decipher names and different things dealing with people, countries, and so forth, and it indicates a lot about them, but it also indicates about the future. Yeah, you, you know, when you read the Revelation, there are numbers everywhere. <laughs> 144,000, seven churches. Uh, it just numbers every time you turn around, there are numbers. See, there's seven churches, but there's also seven chakras for us. That's right. <laughs> and the religions are part of these, these uh, ch chakra system. Yep. So we're, we're, this is what we're doing to diet, meditation, exercise, is to master ourselves, is to take on and overcome uh, our, again, negative desires through past lifetimes. Yes. See yeah. everything in a very positive way. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're here to do. We're, we're initiating people that we know. Yes. You know, Edgar Casey did a whole series called the 281 series on the revelation, and he did just what you're talking about right now. The seven churches of Asia Minor were the seven spiritual centers in the body correlated to the seven endocrine glands. It's, it's fascinating how he could see the revelation as a metaphor of our physical, mental, and spiritual growth. Exactly, and this is why we're into what Coptic is all about is diet, meditation, exercise. Yes. Master, master the desires of the earth plane and yeah. make them positive and help other people accomplish it. That's what we do. And uh, at the Coptic Center, we have classes. They're called self-mastery classes. To make sure we are mastering ourselves to go up the chakra system, just like they did in Egypt. Yes. So so in our, in our trips, and I think probably in yours, we went to the different chakra systems up the Nile to, to initiate people with the chakras. So it's... Uh, it's a process. So what, what Coptic is doing is introducing people to the chakras and how to overcome them. I'll repeat myself, proper diet, exercise, and so forth. Yes. Now I've seen two ways of looking at the chakra system in ancient Egypt. One is where the delta of the Nile is the upper chakras. The other is the reverse of that, where the upper mountains of Nubia and all are the higher mountains, are the higher centers. Which one do you feel more natural with? Well, I feel more natural with the, the, the Egyptian one, but I'm probably prejudiced. <laughs> but I, I really think Egypt is a great symbolic representation of a very powerful past, and now organizations like ours, we attract people to do the exercise, diet, meditation, and then when they become ministers and we train ministers, and then they have centers, and then we teach these um, principles of Coptic. Yeah. Everywhere so, we are. So as the Nile flows, is that like the Kundalini or the life force flowing through us? Exactly. Exactly. And the certain major temples along the way are like the spiritual centers along the pathway of our spinal column, our shashumna. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, going up our spine is the Nile River. Right. And it fans out into 
a greater consciousness and an expanded consciousness. Exactly. Exactly. And but that, through, our, through yeah. our hard work in, in this lifetime, it helps us to climb this ladder of, of the chakra system and pass the tests. Because they're tests, they're tests. And, and uh, this is why self-mastery is, is so important. We've got a mat, we, Earth is not our home. <laughs> no. It's a school. It's a school. Amen. Yeah, Edgar agreed with you. It's the place for soul growth, not permanent residence. This is not our home here. <laughs> this is school, and, and we've got to we've got to go through the tests of the earth school yeah. to go into a heavenly, go into a heavenly state, and it's not so easy. No. We get all the temptations telling us uh, the opposite of diet, meditation, exercise. Yes. So in our classes, in our conferences. We teach, this is what we teach. Right. We, we give them a pattern and just follow this, this and you will grow into a higher consciousness. Yes, that's the truth. And uh, Jesus said in uh, the Gospel of John, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you will be also. Well, that's not here. <laughs> no, it's not here. It's, a, <laughs> it's on the other side. That's right. And when and when when we do pass away and go to the other side, we go through a life review. Yes. Our guides are waiting for us. Yes. Then what do we do next? Do we have to go back to Earth and work on those desires? Do we go to another solar system? Where we go? So everything changes when we go to the other side. Yes. But yeah. that 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 level of consciousness is, is who we really are, but the earth it's time it's time to go back to school. Yeah. And that's when we incarnate. Yeah. And then and then the people we attract in this lifetime, if we are emotionally attached to a person, circumstance, and condition, guess what? That's a mirror of us through past lifetimes. Yes. So it's not a it's not a mistake of our parents, our friends, uh, our our spouses. There are mirrors of us from the other lifetime. Copy yes. flame, if you are emotionally attached, emotion is the key here. If we are emotionally attached to these conditions, this is, this is what it is. And of course, the power of forgiveness is so important too. Yes. Because if someone has treated you a certain way, you have to, we, they call it Judas. We have to forgive Judas. Uh -huh. That's the way to get through that, through that channel and to be there for them. And that's what Jesus did so well. He, forg he, he, he forgave Judas. Yes. So that's the story we teach and then we live it. Yeah. Because I do a, a heck of a lot of um, uh, counseling with people. Yes. And I know you do too. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see, I, I saw Judas metaphorically as an aspect of myself that tries to force the Christ spirit to do some big uh, miraculous thing when actually the path is step by step, day by day, here a little, there a little. And like Jesus said to Peter, we're going to do it the way God wants it done, not the way man thinks it's best. So I saw the Judas energy in me as my earthy self's ideas of what's best <laughs> rather than my spiritual sense of attunement to the great creator. At the same time, we have to forgive ourselves of the mistakes we made in the past too. Yes, yes. Feeling forgiveness is extremely important. Yes. Yeah, because everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. I mean, even the masters make mistakes, but they, they've, like, like Jesus said, forgive him, Father, he knows not what he does. Yes. And then we, we forgive Judas because there's this, this thing about pointing a finger. I, I, I want you to tell him, I, I, I want to tell you about this. Yeah. There's one finger pointed at this person and three fingers pointed back at you. <laughs> yeah. now, 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 how do you know all about him? Those three fingers are pointing back, hey, oh, you knew him in another lifetime. And guess what? You were just like him. <laughs> That's, That's right. The way it works. So emotion is very important. It is. It, it's just not. By the way, it is strong, and you get you get strong feelings about things, people, conditions. So that's that's the way it works, yeah. and we know this. The school <laughs> is not he, it's not easy. No, it's if not. Our, if we're keeping our mind on the service of others, 
Yes. Who am I going to, who, and I think one of the words that is very important is complimenting others. Yeah. In some of my talks, I said, uh, I want you, audience, I want you to raise your hand. If, uh, ra raise your hand if you believe in this theory. And they raise their hand and say yes, in most cases. Yeah. Or yeah. I'm, I'm having a lot of challenges with my Judases. Yeah. For, yeah. Forgive them. Yeah. And you go out and cl compliment everybody you can. And by the way, how many people like to be criticized? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> no one raises. No their one hand. raises their hand. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to. We have to go back and 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 forgive them, and then we forgive ourselves. And then the Ju Ju Judas prophecy by Jesus. Yeah. Is yeah. When it comes to forgiving oneself, I swear there are several moments every day where I have to forgive myself, even when I catch myself doing something of a more negative nature. I have I stop. But rather than cursing myself for doing it, I try to smile and say, that's the human nature in me. Forgive me for that human nature and I'm going to master it. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to master what I came to do. Yes. I will. And then wherever you go, and uh, when my wife and I go out to dinner, we do it quite a bit. We always tell the waiter or waitress how great they are. <laughs> well, I, 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 I wonder how many people in restaurants say t to them, boy, this was a great meal. You're, you're a great waiter. Yeah. <laughs> That's compliments work. They do. Help make a better world. They do. That, that tongue of ours is very powerful. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to go to a restaurant for over a year, yeah. but we're getting yeah. back there. <laughs> yeah, we've gone recently, but we haven't gone very much either. In the uh, scheme of prophecy, where do you think the COVID virus comes in as a global plague like in the prophecies? Well, we have to go through it. I, 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 I don't understand it. Uh, well, why we have to go through it? Uh -huh. Now, I, I, I'm going to give you a little planetary numerology here. The number 1111, November 11th, is a very, very powerful energy. There are four ones there: new beginning, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So, if you go back to last year with November 11th, yes, it was a conception. Now, what's going to manifest? Well, add nine months, we got 8-11, August 11th. So there's going to be a shift of some kind. Bye-bye COVID. That's what I do in my prayers. Oh, your bye prayers. Bye-bye COVID, because I know 11-11 is very, very powerful. Yes. Think of the new physical, mental, emotional, spiritual on a, on a planetary level. So let's just say bye-bye COVID, bye-bye. You know, I've had a lot of messages from people around the world telling me August 11th, something's going to happen. They feel it. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, I don't get, they don't usually have a specific uh, expression of what they think it is, but they feel something is going to change on August 11th. Exactly true. Exactly yeah. right. And, and I've been telling people when, when I'm speaking, so I, I prepare get ready to do a lot of praying on August 11th. And the people that are tuned in here, do, it, do some praying here. Yes. We're, we're, we're in the Aquarian age here, and the Aquarian age is, is mental. So use yes. the power of prayer to change the world. This is why we are being called. And then like us talking about it, the people that are hearing this, you to go in the world, compliment everybody, plant those seeds, particularly on August 11th. Make an event out of it. And we're going to see a change after August 11th there. Yes, Edgar Casey was very big on prayer. And the prayer of a few can save a nation. He was very big on that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, we, we have a responsibility. When we know that we know, then we can spread it to other people. Yes. And these ideas can be shared and the more people that know about it, the more people that are positive, the more people that are, are uh, 
really dealing with empowerment of other people. Yes. We have an opportunity with the power of the tongue to stay positive in, in life. Yes, very but much. Yeah, Edgar Casey totally agrees with you on that. Uh, we are the light of the world right now. And like Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. And guess the, what? By yeah. the way, speaking of, speaking of light of the world, guess what? I wrote a book. Oh. Be the light of the world. Be the light of the world. That's right. Be you did. That was your, was that your first book? No, no. This is my last book. Your last book. Yeah. Which well, one wanna... was, which one was the first book? Uh, that's a long time ago. Oh, really? I don't know. But I want to, I want to do something here. Okay. That, uh, I'm going to read a prayer. Okay. It's called the Light of the World Prayer. Now, keep in mind, each person is the light of the world. Here is the prayer, and I pray every day. I've done it for years. Wow. Here's what it is. Almighty Mother, Father, God, I pray for healings on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, in all families, hospitals, health centers, doctor's offices, psychologist's offices, AA meetings, addiction counseling sessions, and everywhere else for healing and needed and desired. I pray that all politicians choose peace in all circumstances, from the Ten Commandments to national and international expression. I pray that all humanity, remember that all children worldwide are symbolically our children, and our people are our brothers and sisters. I pray that women everywhere are empowered and experience equality with men. All men and women are created equal. I pray that slavery is eliminated from planet Earth. I pray that governmental laws be for the benefit of the people, by the people, and for the people, hungry find food, homeless find homes, sick and injured are healed. I pray that all nations share their nation's natural resources with their people and other nations. I pray that all religious and spiritual leaders pray daily for all good to manifest on earth, they continually seek the manifestation of peaceful coexistence and cooperation of religions. I pray the business will succeed in all nations. And as a result of national and international business successes, everyone everywhere find meaningful, creative, life sustaining work. I pray that the worldwide economy becomes the most successful and stable in the history of the planet. That's it. Wow. I pray every day. Now, if anybody would like to have this prayer, I'll give you my uh, email address. Yep. And I will send it back to them. And that email address is Coptic Sun, C O P T I C S U N at AOL.com. And I will email this back to, back to you and your friends. And together with our collective powerful mind, we're creating a new future. Absolutely. Where two or more are gathered, there am I. Exactly right. Yep. Thank you for that prayer and for giving us the opportunity to have a copy of it and use it in our prayers. And then pass it on to other people. Yeah. Because we are for all people. All people. All people. Yeah. Of the people, by the people, and for the people. Yeah. You're here for all people. Yeah. You know, you know, we lived in all these countries in other lifetimes. <laughs> yeah. Some people forget that. We just don't live in America. No. We, we live in all the different countries. So these words, which are powerful, powerful prayers are powerful. And just do it every day. Plant the seeds, plant the seeds. They will grow. Yes. And the more people we have doing this, the more the, the world will change. Yes. That's very true. That's very true. And the collective consciousness feels those prayers. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're for all people. Yes. All people. Yeah. We can't judge all people. So we just, we forgive them. And we keep sending out positivity. Positive for all people on all levels of consciousness everywhere. And the more we get people praying, the more, the more opportunity for this to happen sooner. Yes. And August 11th is it. I, I'm glad we're on the same page with August 11th. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, it's a very moving uh, spiritual concept, and you've been carrying this for many, many years. 
Yeah, and then I wrote the book, Be the Light of the World. Be oh, the, the Light of the World. Yeah, I got a funny story to tell you. Okay. I started writing it probably five or six years ago, and I got busy and, and uh, I, I kind of stopped it along the way, and all of a sudden, I get a call from a psychic, and psychic, the founder of Coptic was Ahmed Bey. Ahmed Bey on the other side passed away many years ago. He's got one word for you. Finish the book. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a, a very short prayer. Yes, right. Finish the book. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this is why I introduced it. Yeah. That's us. It's a be the light of the world is very powerful. It must be humble with this humility. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's I'm so moved right now by this uh, universal concept and by our ability to uh, affect it through the collective consciousness uh, with prayer and bring about the golden age that's coming. So the people listening to us today will grasp this and apply it in the way they choose. Yes. Because yeah. we have to we have to realize that we are here to spread the word. Yes. It That's takes, very true. Takes farmers like us to plot. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm surprised I turned out to be a farmer, for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the way it happened. Yeah, farmers and fishermen, like Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men rather than are. fishers of fish. <laughs> I think that fishers of men is, is what we're talking about right here. That's right. That's what we're talking about. Sure. The souls of the world need to catch a glimpse of this and they need support from us to strengthen them in the challenge because it is a difficult journey. Yes, it is. Coming, going to school and the, on this planet isn't yep. easy. No, it's not easy. But if, if we only believe in one life, which is not true, we live many, many, many lives. But this, this may be the one we came back to help change the planet by becoming the light of the world, or, or whatever other words would describe it. Yes. Just sit and pray every day. Yeah. Edgar Casey had a phrase he repeated often. He said, there's no surer way of getting there than to keep on keeping on. That's right. Even when you're down, get back up. Back up. Say, I, I forgive you. You're talking to yourself. Yeah. I, I, I forgive me. I ain't doing this again. <laughs> right. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. That yeah. didn't work. But the positive <laughs> way, complimenting others and praying every day, and yes, and uh, you know, being the light of the world or whatever you, we call it, it's the same thing. We're for everybody. Right, everybody, even oh. the least among us. That's right. Yeah, well, we're not judging, but they're on this planet, and we're here to help them. Yeah, in, in a mental age called the age of Aquarius. Yes. These are very high ideals to live by and apply in your life, but they're very important, especially at this time. Yeah, they, th this planet needs our prayers. Yes. Yep, the people of the world do. We're very polarized, and uh, the, the negative energy is powerful and strong these days, so we need a lot more light energy. Well, that's what that's why I came up with the light of the world. Uh, I think that's what I believe that we're all lights of the world, and we're here to plant the seeds and come come with the changes and get as many people involved, and then they'll get involved and tell their friends and relatives and yep, and it grows. Yeah, and it grows and grows and grows until the light overcomes the darkness. Exactly right. Yep. Exactly right, and I'm sure these things we're talking about, John, are, are, are shared in different countries with different languages. Yes, they are. They are. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we're not the only ones. No, I've been to China and Tibet, and they carry spiritual teachings as well, 
I've been in Europe, in Africa, uh, Australia. I, it's everywhere. I've been in South America. There's spirituality everywhere struggling to keep the light on and exactly. in the midst of all the challenges. <laughs> yeah, every time I went to a country, I've been to a lot of countries too, I always went and I looked at their religion and guess what? I liked them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I liked them all. Good. And that's what we have to do. We got to love everybody. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, I'm getting high just talking about this. Well, I am. I am too. I got. I've got chills over here. Chills. <laughs> over here. Good. Good. I hope our viewers feel this and carry it out <laughs> to their world in their little community and their relationships and even toward themselves. It would be wonderful if this little chat that we've had uh, spreads more light. Exactly. That's and why we came together. Well, that's why you and I became buddies. <laughs> right. That's true. You and I really, really became good friends. We did. We did. Uh, we have so much, so, so much in common. That's true. Our souls know each other from way back. <laughs> yep. Yep. And when, you, when I was asked to speak here tonight, I, I was truly touched. Oh, good. I, I think so much of you, bro. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think a lot of you, and I've been around you. I can feel the spirituality of your energy. Well, all we do is try hard, and, and, uh, and this, this is why we're here. Yes. To change the world to a more positive place. Yes, yes. I want to thank you for giving the time to the Edgar Casey organization on this Reflections series. Uh, it, it, I think it's going to have a, a wonderful impact uh, in our soul group as they watch this uh, interview. Well, uh, I'm honored. <laughs> so are we. I'm honored. So, so are I we. You take care of yourself now and keep in touch. Okay. And we'll be uh, sending you that to that email address request for that prayer, Coptic Sun, S U N, at AOL.com. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, John Davis. Mm -hmm.